Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you today because I have one of my favorite people in the whole world to get to interview today. And her name is Shannon Mattern. And I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about her professionally. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about her from how I know Shannon. So professionally, Shannon Mattern teaches entrepreneurs and freelancers how to DIY their websites and market themselves online. And she does that without relying on ads or spending 24-7 on social media, which, by the way, is very, very possible to spend 24-7 on social media, and then you have no life. <laughs> and relying on ads, been there, done that. Um, Shannon's the host of Pep Talks for Side Hustlers, <laughs> Pep Talks for Side Hustlers podcast, and I've had the pleasure of being on that show with her where she shares her own business journey through her monthly income reports and interviews entrepreneurs making from 50,000 to multiple millions of dollars to find out exactly how they did it. So that's her professional bio. I know Shannon because of her DIY websites. And I had a lot of VAs coming to me saying, oh my gosh, you have got to get to know Shannon. And she's amazing. She's fabulous. She's so much fun and she's brilliant. And so Shannon and I got together and found out that we both have a joy for life and we are both open books and just really hit it off. And I've had Shannon uh, present to my group several times. In fact, she's getting ready to present at my October 2020 virtual event, which I'm super excited to have her do. I will tell you that not only is she a kind, wonderful human being, she's also beautiful. So if you're not looking at this on YouTube, you might want to go over there and check her out. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll check and see her status just in case there's any guys out there. I'm kidding, Shannon. Um, <laughs> uh oh, look at down. her. She's showing... locked down. <laughs> <laughs> she's showing her ring. She's showing her ring. Um, she's absolutely brilliant, but she does not have a big ego. And I will tell you that in this online world, there are so many people who let their ego get in the way that you can no longer have joy um, and they're very difficult to talk to. That is not Shannon. Shannon is the real deal. So welcome, Shannon. Thank you so much. Wow, what an introduction. I, uh, I cannot be more excited to be here because I feel the same way about you. I feel, I, I was so happy to meet you and I feel like we're such kindred spirits and I'm just really excited to be here and, and talk to you and your listeners. Yeah, thank you so much. So you were in, in the intro about your podcast, uh, you shared that you share your own business journey. So that's where I'd love for you to start since this is called Dare to Leap, if you don't mind sharing with us uh, your Dare to Leap story. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I followed the typical path of, you know, someone that lives in the U.S., middle-class person, you know, you go to school, get good grades so that you can go to college, so you can get that corporate job and, you know, make enough money to get the mortgage and have a good 401k and benefits. And, you know, that's the life that my parents, you know, wanted for me. That, that was success, right? And so I followed all of those steps to do that. And I found myself at 34 years old. This was about six almost seven years ago now, 34 years old, sitting in my office, beige office, no windows, beige desk, beige filing cabinet, fluorescent lights. I'd been at this job for about seven years and I, and I just started to have like a panic attack. I was doing like this, this TPS, I don't even know what kind of like spreadsheet for the millionth time that no one was going to look at anyway. And I just sat there and I was like, this can't be what I do for the rest of my life. Like there has got to be more to life than this. This is not 
this is not a life. You know, I had to, I just felt so trapped and so stifled. And I also felt very guilty because I was like, I should be grateful for what I have. I have a job. I make good money. I have benefits. To walk away from this would be crazy. It would be like kind of a slap in the face to anybody that is wants that and doesn't have it. Or I had so much stuff around that. And so, but I just, I, I had to make a change. And so one of my friends had given me this book called Push by Shalene Johnson. I don't know if you know who, who she is, but she's like a fitness workout person, right? She's like, hey, read this book with me and let's do it. And I was like, okay. And she wanted to do it for like workout and fitness. And me, I did too. And um, you basically, you set 10 goals that you want to achieve in your life. And then you create an 11th goal, which is a push goal. And that's the goal that is going to make all the other things easier. So I was like, oh, I want to lose 30 pounds and this and this and that. And then my push goal was quit my day job so that I have time to do all of these things. Right. So it was like kind of the culmination of those two things that led me to think, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to, I'm going to replace my paycheck. I'm going to be in control of my time. I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to have everything I ever wanted. And so I was like, well, what am I going to (laughs) do? And, (laughs) and so I was in charge of marketing and IT at my job. And part of my role was like keeping our websites up and running, building our sites. And I loved doing that, that part of my job. I was like, if I could do this all day, I would, I would stay here. I would be happy. It would be fine. But as we know, we have so much other stuff to deal with at, at day jobs. So I, I just kind of struck out on my own. I had one of our vendors at that job said, Hey, who built your website for your company? I was like, Oh, I did. And he goes, you did. Well, do you want to do some freelance work on the side? And I'm like, the stars have aligned. Like, (laughs) yes, I do. And then it like one thing led to another where I had mentioned to someone at the gym that I did web design on the side and um, she needed work done and then a friend's dad. And so a few weeks later, I had like a bunch of clients and I was um, not charging nearly enough (laughs) for my services. I um, didn't have any boundaries in place. So I was like trying to like take calls in the middle of like day job stuff and like basically working 24 seven. And I got to a point where I was just like, okay, I think I just created the exact same situation that I was trying to leave and I need to pivot and do something different. So of course, then I heard another podcast with Pat Flynn talking about passive income and how he, does affiliate marketing and he teaches people how to get their blogs set up and he gets these things called affiliate commissions from hosting companies when people set up their blogs. And I was like, wait a second. Like, are you telling me that all of the tutorials that I read online are not made just by like these generous people with hearts of gold wanting to help us? They are getting like commissions off the back end from these companies when I click on those links. I had no idea. And then I was like, I can do that too. And I was like, I, but I'm going to do it one better. And I'm going to teach you how to build your whole entire website, not just how to get it online and then leave you to figure it out. I'm going to teach you how to build like the kind of website that you need to like run your business online, market yourself online. And so I did. And that's when the free five day website challenge was born. And then I had to figure out how to market the thing, which I'm sure we can talk about (laughs) later. (laughs) But yeah, her, I did that. And, I started making money. And three years later, I had replaced my day job income and I quit. Congratulations. So you worked both your day job, as you call it. I call them a J-O-B. You got yeah, to spell my J-O-B. Words, you know? <laughs> so it took you, you worked three years, um, both at your day job and uh, building your business on the side. And then you were able to quit your day job because you had replaced that income. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Congratulations. And I had, thank you. And I had, I was so glad it took me that long. I learned so many things. I learned so many things that I know now it could have taken me way less time, <laughs> but I needed to learn yeah, those things on, on that yeah. journey for sure. So could you share a couple of the things that you learned um, that can help others avoid whatever those were? Oh that my took gosh. you longer. 
Yeah. So I think one of the things, one of the big things that I learned was like, I needed to change my mindset about my (laughs) J-O-B. I was, I had so much negative, uh, so many negative thoughts about it that it was draining me. I wanted to escape it so bad that I would try anything. Um, And in the trying anything, I spent money I didn't need to spend, you know, So I'd be like making money, but putting it back into the business, into things that weren't working because I just felt desperate to get away from it. And I had finally hired a business coach to help me. And I thought she was going to help me learn how to sell, but she was like, oh no, no, you've got to get your mind right about this job and be grateful for it and learn to love it because you're draining your energy all day long when it's time to work on your business in the evening that you don't have anything left for it because of how you are, um, how you're, how you're thinking during the day. And so she made me work on like gratitude for my day job and, you know, looking at it as like, this is what's allowing me to be able to try a lot of things in my business and, and make mistakes and not have it go well and not have the risk to my personal finances for that. And, you know, I got to the point where when it was time to go, it was hard to leave because I had developed such a good relationship with my thoughts about my job. I had been promoted during that time. Like it was like, it was a game changer for, for how everything went. So that was the, so have gratitude for that J O B as long as you're staying there so that you have the energy for your other for the rest of your life. Yeah. What a great tip, Shannon. Thank you for sharing that. Oh my gosh. And yes. how about the fact that you got a coach? What made you decide to get a coach and how do you feel about, you know, building businesses with a coach or without a coach now? I would never not have a coach. You do like why I, th- I didn't know business coaching was a thing, which is why I started off all on my own. I didn't either. I didn't didn't know it was an option for me. I didn't know it was possible. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there were people that did that. And so Mm -hmm. when I, um, when I met my coach, she is actually someone that had taken my five day website challenge and, um, you know, she had reached out to me like with a question and we kind of struck up a, a rapport and I was looking at her website and I saw that she was a sales coach and I was like, oh, that's what I need because I created this thing and it's not selling fast enough to get me to quit this job, right? <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so I did a consultation with her and in that 20 minute conversation, like she just flipped a switch in my brain about um, how I was thinking about things and what I needed to be doing. And I was like, I didn't even know what I didn't know about how I was approaching this, how I was thinking about it. And of course I hired her. Um, it, I worked with her for the three years that I was side hustling and it was, it was amazing. Going it alone is so hard and why not learn from someone who has already been there, made all the mistakes and not only made all the mistakes, but now I can say like, I've invested so much in myself and my education, I'm sure you have too, that like, I have even more value to offer the people that I coach. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I'm the same way, Shannon. Um, I didn't know at first that there was such a thing as a business coach either. And once I found one, I was like, what is this magical unicorn? I need one. (laughs) And then there were a couple of years when I didn't have one. And for me, what I found was that my business totally stagnated. Yes. I did not grow at all. In fact, if I went too long, I started going backwards. Uh, So what's your experience when you haven't had a coach? Yeah, um, I did. There was that, that first year after I quit my job, I, uh, I was so scared. Like I was so scared about money that I stopped working with my coach because Mm -hmm. I was like, I have to, now this is my only income coming in. I have to make sure I can pay my paycheck, pay my expenses. I, I need to clinch on to every single penny and cut everything back. Like I was so scared. So I stopped working with her and she told me, you know, 
This is the time where <laughs> she's like, I'm not saying this to you because I want your money. Like, this is the time right. where you need me. But I, my fear overrode that. And uh, yeah, it was the hardest year. Um, it, was, it was so difficult mentally. Um, I wasn't growing because I wasn't willing to invest in anything. I was like, let me just keep everything that comes in and, you know, hold on to it tightly. Um, you weren't and then, letting that money flow. You weren't yeah, letting that and, money flow. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, and then I realized like, I need help. I need help again. And then I invested in, um, another coaching program, uh, that was more tactical. That was going to like, she was fantastic, you know, in all ways, mm -hmm. but I needed more like tactical stuff too. Mm -hmm. And of course, there we go. Here we go. Because you don't know what your own blocks are. You don't know what you're, what you're thinking or you need someone to point out to you like that line of thinking is, is exactly why you are where you are. Yeah. It, you know, we're too close to ourselves to be able to really see what's going on. And that coach, she can look, or he can look at what you've got going on and go, boom, 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 here, this, this, this. And it's, it, it feels miraculous when they do it. Just like you said, that switch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you for sharing that. So one of the things you said, as you were describing that, I wanted to go back and revisit because I did this myself also. And I think a lot of people do this, which is you said, I recreated that job that I had and was unhappy again, like I was in the job. So can you talk a little bit more about that and anything you've learned as a result of that, what not to do or to do? Oh yeah. So I set no boundaries with my clients at all up front. Um, I jumped when they wow. said jump. <laughs> I oh my gosh, I did the felt, same thing. <laughs> I felt like a, I felt like an employee again. I'm like, these people are my boss and I must do what they say. And if they ask for this, I must do it. And what I did not, even though, even though I had this expertise that I was bringing to the table and I knew what they needed, I did not feel confident enough to say, um, to say no to things, but to even like guide them in a different direction. And so what I learned was that when someone is like, I need a web designer and you're like, I'm a web designer. And then they're like, how much do you charge an hour? And I'm like $25. And you go into the <laughs> transaction that way. That's exactly what I created by going into that transaction that way. And um, it was only after quitting doing one-on-one -on -one work then to just, I just abandoned it. I was like, I can't do this. And then, and then doing the DIY training. And then, um, my business coach my at the time in those early years, um, cause what would happen is people would say, Hey, I took your DIY web design training. I really don't want to do it myself. Will you do it for me? And I was like, right. no, that was horrible. It was <laughs> awful. And my business coach was like, Shannon, what are you doing? People are wanting to give you money and you're telling them no. And I was like, because I can't handle it. And she coached me through like, you get to decide how you do this. You set mm -hmm. the boundaries. You tell them how they can communicate with you. You decide all of that up front. And then when you have a consultation with them, you explain your process on how you work. And then they either agree to it or they don't. And I'm like, what? this is like a thing that I can do. I can say how I want to work. This is crazy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. And so what did you find once you started doing that, once you started having clients that you would build websites for and that you did tell them, here's my process. What did you discover once you started doing that? I discovered that projects went so much easier um, you know, there's still hiccups, you know, people are people and they bite off more than they can chew, especially when it comes to web design projects. And they think, oh, I hired someone. It's all going to be done for me. And I don't have to worry about it or, or lift a finger. And that's in reality, not the case. You actually need to collaborate pretty closely to get a good, good result. And so setting all of those expectations, still kind of learning my way through, you know, all of that. But but um, 
I think the, the biggest thing that I learned was just like, I could, I didn't have to say no, like, no, I won't do that. I could offer a choice of two options that I would be willing to do. That was like a game changer for someone who is like afraid of confrontation when they're like, oh, I need this done by Friday. Instead of being like, nope, can't happen. I could be like, I can uh, clear my schedule and you can pay an expedited fee or we can get it done next week. And I didn't have to say no, which made me like all panicky before, but I could say, here's two things I'm willing to do. Take your pick. And that was a game changer. That is. And you know how powerful that is for you and for your clients. Yeah. Um, You know, one of the things that I found once I began doing that also, because like, just like you, and I'm sure anybody else that is a business owner who started out uh, going from employee to this, because that is a much bigger shift than we realize. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so if you're, if you're an employee right now and you're thinking about this, just know this is a big part of what you have to learn. Um, it's not the skills necessarily that you need to learn as much as that mind shift of how to be an entrepreneur rather than an employee. So when I finally realized it, just like you, thanks to a coach, you said, you know, you get to decide this and you get to share your process with them. What I found was that clients were really grateful for the most part because they really didn't understand what the process was either. And they liked having an expert guide them through it. Did you find that? Absolutely. Because, you know, when you show up and you're like, here's how this is going to go. Boom, 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 boom. It takes all of the pressure off of them and it just elevates you. Like you said, like, oh, I am the expert. It elevates you to that expert level. And then like, even when I realized like, wow, look at all I am doing for them beyond just handing them a website. I was like, that's worth way more than $25 an hour, like (laughs) eight to 12 times more than $25 an hour. (laughs) Yes. So you have the price based on value. Yes. Not an hourly rate. Exactly. Exactly. So yes, that's what that, that's what exactly what that did for me. That's wonderful. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you about um, is why, why, and I'm just so curious about this. Why do you share your monthly income reports on your podcast, Pep Talks for Side Hustlers? Side Hustlers, which by the way, I love that title for that podcast. (laughs) Uh, Thank you. So when I was starting my journey uh, into the online marketing space, I followed, I've mentioned his name before, Pat Flynn, and he would share his monthly income reports of how he made all of his money. But his income reports were like, I made $800,000 this month. And I'm like, that is awesome. I want to be you someday, but I am nowhere near this. And I thought, you know, I would have loved to have, to to be able to look under the hood of someone who was maybe a little bit close, more attainable in the short term to where I wanted to be. Um, And so when I was thinking about like, what is the best way for me to like tell my story Um, of this journey, because I started doing those income reports in the year that I quit my day job. Um, Mm. I, I, so I was like, well, I want to tell this story. I've started my podcast and I felt like that was really the best way to explain like what happened every month? What was I thinking about every month? How was I, what, you know, how was I making offers to make money? What was I spending my money on? And I found it fascinating looking at someone who was way far ahead of where I wanted to be. I thought my readers might get, or my listeners might get a lot out of um, seeing what it really takes to run a business because there's a whole lot of stuff out there online about like, we can explode our traffic in one week and do a launch with five figures the first time out of the gate and all this stuff that I was chasing in those early days when I was miserable and trying to escape and like, just throwing my money back at these programs that really um, I didn't have the right mindset in place. I didn't have the right products in place. I didn't have the right services in place to really even make them work. And I just wanted to show people like, here's the real deal. 
Like if you want to make a living from what you're doing, pay the bills, pay yourself, have the freedom, have the flexibility, and not necessarily have to have this ginormous business, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Wow. You are really empowering a lot of people by doing that. And you're really telling the truth because Shannon, one of the things that uh, after you see behind, I call it seeing behind the curtain, right? <laughs> after you see what's really going on in a lot of entrepreneurs' businesses, which a lot of times you don't get to, but sometimes you get that glimpse. You know, those people that are uh, by the big old Ferrari and the great big house and all of that. And then if you know how much they're really making or how much debt they're really in, you go, what? Uh, did you ever have that experience? I, what I, I didn't ever see, like, I never got to like hear a story like that. But what I did notice is a whole bunch of people talking about how much money they made and nobody talking mm -hmm. about how much money they spent. And that exactly. was the cur most curious. I was like, okay, so you made $70,000 in your launch, but how much did that cost you? How much did you have to pay in Facebook ads? How much did you have to pay your VA, like your VAs or, you know, the people on your team what did you walk away with at the end of the day? Because that's what matters. That's why we're doing this. Like the revenue is that's great, right. but we need to know what the, what the other side of that looks like. And if someone is mm -hmm. going to sell me a course telling me that I can make six figures, but mm -hmm. I'm going to have to spend six figures to make six figures, like that's right. just not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another thing you and I really have in common is let's not tell them just the good news. Let's right. tell them the reality. So for example, um, for me, I kind of simplify it to, for example, a uh, virtual assistant or virtual expert, which is what I train. Um, they're gonna, on the average, if they do what I recommend, they're gonna earn about 80% profit, 20% expenses. Yep. Which is really good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, yeah, for coaches, like before I became a coach, I was a VA, 80-20. I was making money all day long, right? 80-20. Man, keep going. I, that was my cash cow. And nobody told me that coaches, if you do well, it's the flip of that. 20% profit, 80% expenses. Nobody told me. Yeah. So it was a huge surprise and not a pleasant one. Yeah. Yeah. And I've like in the early years of my business, I was like 50, 50, you know, and I have, I've, which leaned, is excellent. I have leaned my business to where I am about like 80, 80, 20 on profit. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't, but I have it scaled. Right. So that's the yeah. thing. Like I'm at this, I'm at this place where it's all organic. I'm not paying for traffic and I am maxed out on capacity. So if I want to grow my, mm -hmm. my profits, my profit margins are going to skew. I will make mm -hmm. more money, but it won't, it won't be the pro it won't be 80, 20 profit. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. a, those I'm, I'm kind of bumping up against that next, um, mm -hmm. that next mindset level hurdle, next level, of, next devil. Yes, exactly. Of like, yeah. do I want to just keep it how it is? Cause I ha I'm comfortable. Or do I mm -hmm. want to go for more? And yeah, I, I and think Shannon, I want that's to go a for really more, good thing scared. to ex <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's a really good thing to explore though, because yeah. um, one of the things that I have learned too is just because you can doesn't mean it's what's best for you. Right. Yep. And a lot of times we don't stop and take that breath and go, oh, wait a minute. What do I really want my lifestyle to be like? Yep. And I think, I think the fear for me now comes from, I don't want to be as burnt out as I was in that first year when I was hustling. And then the other thought that I have is like, why don't you just chill out for a minute and enjoy what you have and take some mm -hmm. time to slow down and relax. Like I always have my foot on the gas. I'm always like looking forward. Um, and I'm like, I could, just, you know, take a few months to enjoy yeah. what I've created and slow down right. a little bit, build the infrastructure I need, the team that I need to support that next level instead of having to do it all yesterday. 
Yeah. And Shannon, quite honestly, uh, hearing you say that, I, I just want to second your, your idea of building that infrastructure first. <laughs> It'll save you, you a lot of headaches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As someone like to move who- fast and it's not always mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. My team, um, I think it was last week, they said, okay, w- when we get through this really busy part, we're, we're, we're going to all be okay. And I said, all right, let's, let's have a reality check here. How long have you been working with me now? And every month, pretty much you say, when we get through this busy part. So the reality is working with me means we're not going to slow down. Yeah. If that isn't a good fit for you, you know, let's talk about what else you could do instead of what you're doing now, because I'm not letting my foot off the gas right now. Yeah. And for me, Shannon, uh, you know, just so you know, you know, we're at very different places in our lives as far as age. You're very young. You could be my daughter, literally. Um, (laughs) And I would love to have you as my daughter. Um, I'm 63. Okay. And I have seven, this is how I look at it. I have seven years left. Before yeah. I need to really consider start slowing down in case my health deteriorates. That's kind of how I look at it. I may keep going to 85 with my business, but I want to have the option to slow down if I need to due to health um, because I know my family history. Yeah. Um, but luckily, I have not followed in my family history so far, but you never know. But that's my plan. So I've got seven years. So I'm like, okay, here's my seven year plan. And I got to have my, get my foot on the gas because I have so much I want to achieve. And, and also it is so exciting. I love it. That is my adrenaline rush. Yeah. Literally my job is my adrenaline rush. My work is my adrenaline rush. Oh, me too. Do you ever feel like that? It's the most rewarding thing. It's hard for me to stop. And because I do love it so much, um, you know, and people are like, oh, you work every day. And I'm like, but I love what I do. The problem becomes when I start telling myself, I have to do this, I have to do that, I'm so busy, and I start talking to myself in a way that stresses me out, that's when the problems come in. When I am talking to myself like, you are awesome, look at the impact you're having, look how many people's lives you're helping change, Um, look at these great relationships that you're building, and I tell myself the truth instead of like Mm -hmm. the the things that... um, just don't help. They're not helpful. Uh, it, right. it just is so, it's so much easier, um, to, to go to, to like love the, the, it doesn't feel like I'm compelled when it comes from like a bad place, when it comes from like a really like rewarding and just warm, awesome place. Like I can't put my laptop down. It's so much fun. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel too. And I know exactly what you're talking about. It is literally a shift in your mindset of it because there are days that I think, oh, I have to do X, Y, Z. And then there are other days when I think, oh, I get to do X, Y, Z. And it's literally just that small of a shift that totally changes my enjoyment of what I'm doing. Yeah. And it's that whole, like you were talking earlier, that whole employee employee mindset to entrepreneur Mm -hmm. mindset. Like when I was an employee, Mm -hmm. I did have to, like someone told me that I had to do this and I don't have that job anymore. Like I, you know, Mm -hmm. that's the conditions of employment. I -hmm. choose everything that I do in this role. I choose everything. Even if, even when I was working with clients, I chose those clients. I opted into to that. It was all my choice. I'm fully in control of all of it and I get to change it at any time. So continuing to lie to myself or use those words, like I have to, I have to do this. I have to do that. Like, no, I choose to do it or I get to do it or, you know, but it's all, I could change it anytime. So if I'm not changing it, I'm doing it for a reason. And there's no reason for me to talk to myself like that and make it harder. (laughs) And that is a great tip for anybody who's thinking about doing this or anybody who's in the midst of it. You know, my husband periodically reminds me when I will sometimes complain, um, oh man, I'm just exhausted and I need a little bit of time off. He'll go, Huh, why don't you ask your boss? I know if my she husband would give says, you some time off. 
<laughs> my husband says the same thing or like I would, my friends would be like, hey, do you want to do this this weekend? This was pre-COVID when we did things together. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, no, I, I, got, I can't. I got to work. And they're like, man, your boss is a jerk. And I'm like, oh, you're right. I don't have to work. Like I could have said that totally different. Like I'm choosing to get this project done and you know, or mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. I don't have to like, let me go do the things that I said I wanted to do when I started this, which was have more freedom and time for friends and family and all of those things. So, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, you have shared so many great things. Now, before I got a, a couple more questions for you, um, but before I go there, was there any additional part to this journey that I cut you off? Is there anything else on the journey that you wanted to share or did we get through it? I think we got, I think we really got through it. I think, you know, like that first year I was just so scared, but um, it was kind of towards the end of that year when I got help again. And I realized I started understanding like, oh, I know how to like make money. I know how to make offers. I know how to create thing, like create value. Um, I just have to get over people p potentially saying no and not, not making it mean anything about me and just keep putting it out there and putting it out there and putting it out there. And eventually like it does kind of take on a momentum of its own. Um, at <laughs> Be some careful point. what you wish for. <laughs> right. At some point. And so I'm, I, I'm out of the fear phase, but I can't imagine that anyone quitting their day job um, wouldn't feel that. I would think that that's very normal. And I just don't think that like, I don't think you can avoid it, but I think if you know that it's coming, maybe it won't last as long as it did for me. Yeah. And you can realize that everybody goes through this. Yeah. You're not, because isn't part of it. You think, well, there's something wrong with me because look how easy everybody else did it, but you didn't really, they didn't share with you their fears. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, it's all like, I don't want to say sold to us, but kind of like, it's the dream, right? Absolutely. It's, the dream it's to, sold like, to us. Quit your job, go sit on the beach with your laptop. And you know, that's all great. But like, there is some, there's mental work that needs to be done to transition from um, being an employee to an entrepreneur and, you know, actually being able to enjoy what you create for yourself. It, you know, once you, once you work through, um, fully buying into that, you're, you're completely capable of making this work, mm -hmm. which I believe anybody is. So talk more about that. You believe anybody is. I believe anybody who wants it can absolutely make it happen. I think that, that we are the only people in our, in our own way. Um, when it comes to it, we have, we think we can't, we have all these doubts. We think we're not good enough. Um, and so we let all of that hold us back. I, if like, you have to like feel all of that and do it anyway, because the only way that stuff goes away is by proving it to yourself over and over that that's not true by doing the work. You, you have to like do it scared. Yeah, absolutely. And guess what? That's what the term courageous means. Yeah. It doesn't mean you don't feel the fear. Yeah. You feel right? the You're fear, not you courageous anyway. if you don't feel. That's right. You're brave and courageous when you feel the fear and do it anyway. So anybody who's like, well, you know, uh, just don't be afraid of it. Yeah. That's like, tell, that's like telling somebody who is literally in an extreme depression, just get over it. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Great recommendations. I love that. You know, I wanted to, <laughs> I had a thought, an analogy of while you were describing website building and do you do, do you still do that? I know you do. You still have your five day, say it again, your free five day, free five day website challenge, <laughs> which is awesome. We're going to put a link to that because, you know, if you, if you're even thinking a little bit about, I might want to build a website or I want to learn more about it. This challenge is amazing. Um, so you still do that. 
And you, do you still build people's websites? Do you still take those projects on? I do on? not. So about Woo! a year ago, <laughs> I, I stopped. And so I was, I was looking at my revenue and I was looking at my time spent versus how much money I was making. And I was spending about 80% of my time on one-on-one -on -one client work. And it was bringing in uh, only 50% of my income. And my, uh, my affiliate marketing from the five-day website challenge, plus my marketing courses, my teaching web designers how to run web design businesses, um, and all those things, that was bringing in the other 50%. And I thought, wow, if I'm only spending 20% of my time on this and it's bringing in that much money, what if I spend 100% of my time on it? And so I took my last one-on-one -on -one client and finished that up in September of 2019. And for the past year, I uh, went all in on courses and trainings and, and like templates and um, you know, like website templates and things like that. And that almost, that was scary too. That felt like quitting my job again. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm letting go of these big paydays. And now I have to find more customers to sell this stuff too. But, um, so best thing I ever did. So worth it. Revenue has doubled since I've done that working the same amount. It's still going to grow. Um, and so it's just, it's just part of the journey. Like I can't, and, and I tell, tell myself, I'm like, there's no one saying that you can't take a one-on-one -on -one web design client ever again, if you need one. Like, I felt like I was like closing the door forever. And then I'm like, I could offer that anytime I wanted or needed to. Like, right. Right. It's just these weird yeah, I think black about and white that thinking that you get into sometimes. I know. Cause I think about that too. I'm like, why did I ever stop being a VA? And then I'm like, oh yeah, I can go back to it anytime I want. Yeah. So I, I didn't actually like stop and shut the door forever. I didn't put cement around it. I could just right. open that door back up again if I ever wanted to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Isn't that awesome to have all the options? And that's what I love. I love yes. having options. Yep. Yeah. So can you hear noise in the background here? I heard just a little bit of rustling. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> We're just going to have a, we're, we're going to have a little squirrel moment here. Cause I have to tell you guys, this, this is so hilarious. <laughs> and I hope my husband is listening right now because you know, we live in a tiny house and he knows I'm on a podcast. He, I told him I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon doing podcast interviews, but yet he is on the other side of this wall right now, filling, doing something over there, filling dog <laughs> cans or something, dog food cans <laughs> or something. And I know he's going to go, Oh my gosh, you're talking about me on the podcast. Yes, because we can hear you. <laughs> I'm about so. to, um, we're building a house. We'll be moving into it in about 30 days. And my husband will also be working from home once that move happens. And so um, I can only imagine what my podcast is going to be like at that time. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> it just oh, is what it is at always, that point. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's nonstop. And you know, working from home is just like that. And it's it's a it's it's a constant uh, house of horrors in, on some <laughs> ways, and a constant uh, fun house in, in other ways. So right. I would never trade it. I oh, love no. have, oh, being able no. to work from home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For for everyone that is um, that had to transition to that with, uh, from not their choice, I was just like, oh man, I wish that would have happened <laughs> when I was working at my day job. I would have loved getting to work from home, but my my husband's kind of over it. He misses people and needs to be around people. So, not me. Yeah. So, uh, don't you feel like day. you're around people all day long? I feel like like me yeah. like she and we've never met in person. But yet I feel like we have. Oh, yeah. I, I agree. I talk to people all day long. It's not like I'm isolated here here in my right. office. So, yeah, technology right. is amazing. It is. It really is. So um, what tips do you have for anyone who is thinking, wow, you know, just like you did when you heard about Pat Flynn and who's now thinking, wow, Shannon, she's really, she's doing what I want to do. They've got that day job and they are dreaming of having their own business. So what tips can you share with those people? Uh, such a good question. So um, very practically, um, figure out how much money you need to make to leave the day job. I 
I figured a good rule of thumb, and I don't know if you have a good rule of thumb. Mine was twice your my take home pay was what I needed to bring my my business to bring in for me to pay myself, pay taxes, and pay my business expenses. Probably is probably a little generous, maybe one and a half to two times. Um, so that's like kind of the first goal, right? Like, and then so my goal was I want to hit that number two times. And once I've done it two times, then I will put my notice in because I know that I could do it again. So that was, that was thing one is just having that target because sometimes I think people are like, I need to make six figures or whatever. And it's like, do you like, maybe ultimately you want to, but do you like, but you don't have to get there yet. What do you need? And even, and, and just even looking at like your personal finances and stuff, like, do you actually need two times your take home pay to to survive? Would you be willing to quit before you did that? Take a little bit less. Who knows? Everybody's situation is different. I wanted to pay off. We wanted to be debt free except for our house before I quit. So, um, you know, we had all these things that we wanted to, to make sure that we did, but I think looking at your personal financial situation and just getting all of that, those ducks in a row, helps you understand where you need to be. And then thing two, yeah. oh, and go I'm going to pause you just for a second there. Cause I totally agree with you. One and a half times is exactly where I go. Um, and if you need more security two times, and some people even want to build a little nest egg. So I totally agree with you on that. Sorry, I interrupted you there. Oh, no problem. And yeah, I think because two times sometimes seems like, oh, that's so far to reach. Like, I think one and a half times um, will get you there, especially as like a service provider. So if you're doing something like I do, where I I need more tools, like subscriptions and like things to like run the technical side of my business, um, you might, you don't need all of those things when you're um, just being a service provider. Um, And then the other thing is like, you have got to carve out time to work on your business outside of everything else that you have going on um, and not try to just hope that you can fit it in um, around your day job. And for me, thinking that I would, I'm thinking that I would do it in the evenings after a long day of work was not happening. It was happening if I felt like I had to get this done for a client and then I was like burning myself out completely. So what I did is I, um, I asked my boss if I could start coming in at 9.30 instead of 8.30 and she agreed. So I shifted my schedule and then I started getting up earlier. So I would get up at like 5.30, I'd be ready to go by 6.30, I would be, I would work um, for two and a half to three hours. And then I'd skip our rush hour traffic. It took me way less time to get to work. And, um, and I shifted my schedule like that. And then I also would, um, take like one day, a, a month off, like a vacation day and work exclusively on my business. And then I'd work, uh, carve out like Saturday and Sunday mornings to do things. Um, and so, and then like, I also wouldn't do anything client related on Mondays. I called it like Mondays and mornings are mine. Like I'm working on my own business on Monday, uh, Monday, and I'm working on my own business in the mornings. And then I will put, do client work like on the weekends or in these other time blocks that I, that I, um, do. And I had to be so, it took me forever to, to like, stick to that schedule. I would make it every week and then I would like let it all go. And then I'd make it the next week and I'd let it all go. And then I really had to, had to see like me actually doing what I say I'm going to do is like freedom. Not, not making the schedule is not, is not making the schedule is like hectic and crazy and not, not freedom. Me making this schedule is like a breath of fresh air. I just know when everything's happening and I have time for it. And that's the biggest hurdle for side hustlers is like, how am I going to do all of this? I'm so overwhelmed. I don't have time for my business. You have to make the time. It's not going to just magically appear. And don't just keep all that in your head. What I hear you saying too, is if you've got it all just running around in your head, I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to. Um, And you don't get specific about it and write it down. You're going to show us what you use. Oh yeah. I'm going to just, uh, <laughs> cool. 
I write it all down. I time block it yep. every single day, what's happening. Yep. Um, and, you know, that's, that's how, that's how I do it. Like, I because still then do it's it out way. of your head. It's out of your head. It's concrete. Mm -hmm. Your brain isn't filled up with that. Yeah. So you're free to think about creative stuff and how to get the work done and actually doing the work. So I love that. And by the way, I'm a huge time block fan. Also, I use that. I don't know. I don't even know how I did life before time blocking. I struggled so much in those first couple of years, just winging it that I, I, should like that it's one of those things i could have made this happen faster um if i would have listened to my coach <laughs> done what she told me Ooh, now that's an idea actually yeah. do what your coach says wow imagine that <laughs> oh, i love it i love it so yeah get really specific love that time block um, just tons of great tips, Shannon. Thank you so much. So before I let you go today, I, I know people are going to just be in love with you. Just like I am. Don't tell your husband. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to want to be able to know more about you, more about how to work with you. So how can number one, who's your ideal client? Who are you looking for? Who can you help? And then number two, how do they get a hold of you? How do they reach you? How do they find out more? Awesome. Well, so my ideal client is anyone who wants to start a business on online. So whether that's providing a service, um, selling digital products, courses, whatever, that they are going to market themselves online and they are going to get clients um, online somehow through the internet so that they're not like, you know, physically in person going to networking meetings and stuff like that. They're going to use their website to market themselves and get clients. And so I mostly work with female entrepreneurs, but not exclusively. I, my person is someone who thinks they're not techy enough to do it, who doesn't have anyone else really speaking to them or serving them in, in this capacity, um, which I'm not like, a, I'm not like a we're women only here because that's not necessarily the case, but there's a whole lot of resources out there for guys to build their websites and like whatever, but there's, but there's, it's so techy. Like there's these forums out there that like, if you don't ask the right question, they're like, you are not smart enough to be in our little playground and you should not be asking that. You should not be doing this. If you have to ask that question, there is none of that where so if that re that type of education resonates with you where it's like you can ask mm -hmm. whatever you think is a dumb question and, and if you tell me you think it's dumb i'll be like there are no dumb questions here don't ever <laughs> say that again um yeah that's and that's women who are bad about is. starting with that women are bad about starting with that this is a dumb question or in in i know i used to do that too no there is no dumb question. Just ask. And everybody, I just want to tell you, Shannon really, really is like this because I am one of those who is, you know, I don't know tech. I don't want to know tech. If I can't restart my computer and fix it, it ain't going to get fixed by me. <laughs> yeah, but my thing she, is, oh, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Um, with Shannon, she talks in a language that even I can understand. Um, she, you know, it's not like coding and she's saying all these, what, what language did you just speak? I don't understand what you said, right? She speaks in a language that I can understand, that any of us can understand. And you don't have a big ego about it. You're brilliant at what you do, but you're, you know, you're down to earth and fun and you make it fun for people. So that's what I would say for people if they're thinking, oh, I'm a little intimidated about this. Shannon's the place to go. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel like I'm teaching you a means to an end. I'm not teaching you like website theory or like it's like you need a website. I will teach you click by click how to get it, how to get it. Like I, it's like I don't need to teach you how an engine works to teach you how to drive a car. Like I do not need to teach you how the like the whole everything the end all be all back end of WordPress to teach you how to build a website. <clears throat> you want a website? I'm gonna get you there without tech talk jargon like 
a, a forum for you to like ask your questions and all of those things. So all of that is um, at shannonmodern.com. You can sign up for my free five-day website challenge there. And then I've got a couple of other trainings. Like if you already have a website, but you're not getting traffic and you like just don't know what to do. I have a how to market yourself online um, training. And then if you're like, I would like to be a web designer, um, I think that's fun, but I don't know how to get clients. I have a training called how, how to start a freelance web design biz. And that's, that's over there too. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing all that. And we'll put links to all of that and your podcast in the show notes. So Shannon, thank you so much for being here with me today. I know listeners have gotten just a wealth of information from you. I learned something new every time I talk to you and I appreciate it. Thank you. I learned something new every time I talk to you. So thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. The only thing we're going to have to get you is a tiara. You still don't have a tiara, do you? I don't have a tiara. <laughs> I need no, one. I know, how to, I know how to do that. I know how, I know how to help you with that. So I'll be helping you with that. <laughs> Amazon.com, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye Shannon. Bye. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.